So in my town, we got Green Room late. Yeah, it was supposed to come out the last week of April, but we didn't get it until either the week of Money Monster or the weekend after Money Monster. But thankfully I saw it last Monday, because you know why? It didn't even last a week here. And yeah, they got it on a Friday, I believe, and uh, it barely made it to Thursday. So I was excited to see Green Room as soon as I saw the first trailer. But once I found out that Green Room's director was the same director as Blue Ruin, and after I saw that Green Room had a lot of good reviews, I got really excited, even more excited. First off, Green Room has a very simple premise. Our main characters of the film are in a band, a punk band, with four members. And they really don't have a lot of money. Heck, they even have to siphon gas from cars in a parking lot. And they're desperate to take any gig they can get. Yeah, it's really funny because the first gig we see them actually play in the movie, they're at a diner and it looks like just a normal diner where people are still eating and just minding their own business. And here we have our band screaming and doing this really crazy punk rock music, like the, the screaming type, not the... Definitely not the pop punk type, you know? <laughs> it's quite ironic to see that. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of humor within this film. Sometimes it's dark, most of the time it's dark, and sometimes it's just ironic. It's never like really laugh out loud moments or anything like that. But anyway, they're so desperate that they decide we're gonna play this other gig and it's a gig for a bunch of neo-Nazis. Very smart idea, isn't it? But anyway, they play their gig, they're about to leave, well, unfortunately, they discover someone murdered. They end up walking right into the crime scene. And so they lock themselves into the room while Nazis being run by Patrick Stewart are going to kill them. I had a blast watching this movie. But I feel I do have to warn you about Green Room because you can go in there with a certain expectation and it's going to be completely different from said expectation. Because if you go into Green Room thinking it's a non-stop horror or even a non-stop action film where they're locked in a room and now they have to escape and try to fight their way through these Nazis to escape, then you're going to be sadly mistaken because Green Room is not that. Yes, it has a B-movie premise to it, but it's done in a very serious, more realistic manner. This is not some non-stop action movie. This is not some really graphic, horrifying horror film. No, in the heart of it, it's more of a suspense and slight drama. I think the best way to get you prepared for what Green Room is a little more like is go see Blue Room if you can because, again, that's another B-movie, very simple premise that's done in a more realistic and more dramatic style more so where it's actually taking itself seriously and trying to be a really artistic and actually well-crafted film. And last time I looked, Blue Room was on Netflix Instant. At least I believe it was. It's been a while since I actually checked, but that's where I saw it. But the style and craft of Green Room is very much like Blue Ruin, where it's got this B-movie, very simple premise to it. But the characters are more developed. The whole situation has a more realistic tone to it. And there are times where the movie is crafted so well that it almost feels like it could, could have been a contender for an Oscar-type film, you know? I thought all the acting was really good in the film. There's not a lot of big actors in it, though. The biggest actors would be Patrick Stewart and Anton Yelchin, whatever his last name is. He's, he's the guy from Star Trek. Patrick Stewart and, yep, two from Star Trek in this film. And the main character from Blue Ruin is also in this film as one of the Nazis. One of the things I loved about the film is it feels a little like Game of Thrones in a way. You know, when Game of Thrones does everything necessary to keep the conflict going no matter the cost, whether a character dies or whatnot. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Every time there's a hopeful thing that happens, every time the characters look like they can make it out alive, something happens to take away all that hope. So constantly the characters are moving forward and then getting thrown back into a very hopeless, depressing situation. It's like no matter what they do, no matter how much progress they get, they're always sent back to a hopeless, terrible state in order to keep the conflict going and to keep the movie going. I also really enjoyed the way they use violence in the film. It's not one of those really graphic movies where it's 
totally violent throughout the film. And this is no Saw movie or anything that would really desensitize you to the violence within the film. No, they use the violence really sparingly, so when it actually does happen and when it happens in really key moments where it actually is very graphic, brutal, and really gross, it's more effective because you're not desensitized by more violence throughout the film. It's not like there's, it's so violent that they're just continually throwing these gross, really terrible moments throughout where it desensitizes you and when it actually becomes important you're like, oh, well, it's just like all the other stuff we've seen. No, it uses violence in key moments so that when it actually does happen and when it is gross, you're really affected by it. So it uses violence as its horror element in a very effective manner. And trust me, during those key moments, the movie does get really brutal. But it definitely adds to the shock value because it's during these moments where all hope is lost. Ultimately, this is a movie I would almost give five stars to if it weren't for a few things that did irk me a little bit. For one, I understand that these characters are more inept characters or characters that don't know what to do in the situation they're in because it makes sense that they would be incompetent and who, w who would know what to do in these kind of situations? Panic sets in, you have no idea what's going on. It makes sense that bad decisions will happen. And in Blue Ruin, we had a main character that was incompetent, that didn't know what to do, and just ran with it. But in Blue Ruin, it was done in a more realistic fashion where it made sense and it didn't feel like dumb decision making. In Green Room, for the most part, it does make sense and you understand these characters would make these sorts of decisions. However, there are at least two, maybe three decisions that the group make that even to them seems really dumb. Such as a moment where they decide to split up. Really guys? You're gonna split up? But again, most of the times they make dumb decisions in this movie does make sense and you can understand the panic that these characters are in and you understand that, okay, maybe if I were in this situation and if I were as scared as them and that hopeless of a situation, maybe I would have done that too. But unfortunately, there still are a few moments in this film that are too dumb even for that sort of situation and even for those characters. On that very same note, it seems like the Nazis are just as incompetent. Because even though they have the upper hand throughout the entirety of the film, almost, it does feel like they're dragging their feet a little. It does feel like they hold back and try to do the situation in a different way. And I can understand this because they do want to sort of make it look like an accident. And so they want to keep certain things from happening and devolving into chaos. But at that same time, there are moments that feels like they could have gotten on with it already and killed them already. Other than that, Green Room was almost a perfect film for me. At least in my opinion. Obviously, everyone has different opinions. It might not be a perfect film for you, but for me, it was almost a perfect film. So I'm going to give Green Room a strong four and a half stars. So did you see Green Room? What did you think about it? Go ahead and comment below. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and check out my movie reviews of 2015 and 2016. As always, this is Bruce Gifford and this was Just My Opinion.